believe it or not, there are actually other smart home devices in the world besides the Sonoff. I know, I didn't believe it at first either, but it's true. As far as Arduino compatible Wi-Fi devices go, the two most common are the Note MCU and the D1 Mini. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to load Tasmoda onto these boards and then add some new and useful things like a temperature and humidity sensor, control programmable LEDs, and a motion detector, of course, all using Home Assistant, cause that's what I do. The brains in these little devices is the same as what's in the Sonoff. That's this ESP8266 chip. Now the difference between the D1 Mini and the Sonoff is the number of available pins. The Sonoff Basic has three pins that are easily accessible. The D1 Mini has 11. So that means you can connect a bunch of input devices like sensors and a bunch of output devices like relays or lights. I've used the D1 Mini for my holiday LEDs and for my first smart garage door opener. It runs Arduino sketches just fine, but I'm not a trained Arduino code writer. That's one of the big reasons why I use Tasmoda. Tasmoda is a great alternative to an Arduino sketch or the default firmware on some of these cool and cheap smart home devices. Tasmoda is really capable and I think it's pretty user friendly. So I wanna see what all we can do with Tasmoda on the D1 Mini. The first step is to download the latest version of Tasmoda and the Arduino IDE, if you don't already have them. Once you get the Arduino IDE installed, open the preferences and paste this URL into this box. While you're here, take a peek at where your sketchbook is located. We're gonna need to copy some files there in just a second. Then go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, then search for ESP8266 and install it. Then go to the Tasmoda Lib folder and copy everything in there. Go to the location of your Arduino sketchbook that you just saw in your preferences and paste everything that you just copied from the Tasmoda Lib folder. Now open sonoff.ino and then go to the userconfig.h tab. Add your Wi-Fi info, your MQTT info, and give it a unique project name. One of the really nice differences between this board and the Sonoff is there's no funky procedure for putting it into programming mode. It's a development board, so it's always gonna be in programming mode. Just use a micro USB cord, plug it into your computer, and then select the COM port that just appeared. Now under Tools, select the board type, and then make sure that the rest of your settings look like this. Now if you're using the Node MCU board, you may need to do another step before it will show up in your COM ports list. I had to install this CP210X driver. I think that's because the Node MCU board has another chip on it. I don't exactly know what it does, but maybe someday I'll find out. Another important difference between the Node MCU and the D1 Mini is that the Node MCU can run on five volts or 12 volts, while the D1 Mini can only use five volts. So if you're using 12 volt lights, using a Node MCU board instead of a D1 Mini means you don't need to add an extra power supply or a voltage regulator. That's nice. Once your upload has hit 100%, go to your router or an app like Fing and find the IP address of the new device. Then put the IP address into your browser. That'll open up the Tasmoda main page. Tasmoda will set the device type as Sonoff Basic by default. To change it, go to configuration, configure module, and then in the drop down menu, select generic. In older versions of Tasmoda, it was called D1 Mini or Node MCU. Now, it's just called generic. Now save and the board will restart. When it comes back up, go to configuration and configure module. And now look at all those options. Every one of those boxes can be configured to do something. So let's have some fun. To mess around with this board and all these new options, I bought a pack of 37 sensors. For now, we're gonna use a couple of what I think would be the most interesting and useful to folks. A lot of folks are interested in getting temperature and humidity. So let's connect that sensor first. The one I have is the DHT11. It's a pretty common model, but there are others. The Tasmoda website has a list of supported sensors and it tells you which options to select from the menu for each sensor. If you don't see the sensor that you wanna use, that doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means getting it to work is gonna take a bit more effort. Getting the temperature and humidity to show up in Tasmoda is super easy. The sensor has three wires. One goes to ground, one goes to voltage, and the output goes to a GPIO pin. Go to the configuration module menu, and for that GPIO pin, select DHT11, then save, and the board will restart. When it restarts, you should see the temperature and humidity front and center. Now getting those values to show up in Home Assistant in some way that we could use them for automations was a little bit tricky, but not too bad. Go to your configurations.yaml file or your configurator and ator and in the sensors section, add this. D1 Mini 01 is what I called my project when I loaded Tasmoda on this board. You'll need to put your own project name in the place of mine. The tricky part here was getting the value template right. If you look at the payload that gets sent on that topic, it looks like this. This is JSON formatting, so it's in pairs. You can see time 
has a value and temp unit has a value, but DHT11 has two values. Getting the template to pull the right value had me stumped for a bit. Thanks to me hardy, Irotris, for pointing me in the right direction. The key was adding DHT11 between a couple of periods to the template. You may never have to use this again, but it caused me enough trouble that I thought I better include it. Save your configuration file and restart Home Assistant. With the template working, you should now see temperature and humidity in Home Assistant and two new sensors that you can use for automations, like automatically buying a one-way ticket out of town when the humidity is above 85%. Now you could attach this same sensor to a Sonoff. Just connect the output to one of the other GPIO pins and the rest of the settings are the same. So even though I'm using the D1 Mini, I'm still really thinking about my baby, the Sonoff. For the next bit of fun, let's connect some programmable LEDs. Tasmoda is already set up to run WS2812 LEDs. Those are very common and easy to get. They're essentially the same as the Adafruit NeoPixels, if you've ever heard of those or used them before. Now, if you're going to run more than a couple LEDs, you're gonna want a separate power supply. Each of the GPIO pins on the D1 Mini can only support a load of about 12 milliamps. Each of those LEDs requires between 20 and 60 milliamps. So plan your power supply accordingly. I've got a string of five volt LEDs. So I use a five volt, three amp power supply, which provides enough power for the D1 Mini and 150 LEDs. Connect the data pin from your LEDs to one of the GPIO pins on the D1 Mini. And then in Tasmoda, select WS2812 for that pin. Of course, make sure you have the positive and negative connected on the LEDs too. Duh. After that, hit save and the board will restart again. When it comes back up, you'll have a dimmer slider and a toggle button. To play around a little bit with the available effects in Tasmoda, go to the console and use the color, scheme, and dimmer effects. There's a couple other things too, like speed and fade. When you want to trigger the lights from Home Assistant, you can call the service MQTT Publish with topics and payloads that look like this. I think one of the most useful things is going to be to have the payload be a plus or a minus for different buttons. That's cool. Next step is to go back to your configuration.yaml file or the configurator under the lights section and copy in this. After you do that, save and restart Home Assistant. Now you should see a new light on your overview page. When you turn the light on and click on the little light bulb or the name of the light, you'll get a color wheel and the dimmer slider. That's cool. Now let's set up the PIR. PIR stands for Passive Infrared. We typically use these as motion detectors, but they're not really detecting motion, they're detecting heat. And as someone pointed out in the chat in the last live stream, they should only detect large balls of heat, like humans, and ignore small balls of heat, like pets. Well, most pets. Like most other sensors, the PIR has three pins, voltage, ground, and output. Of course, the output goes to one of the GPIO pins, but if you look in the options on the drop-down menu, you won't see one that says PIR. The PIR is essentially a switch. So for this sensor, we're just gonna select switch. Now in Tasmoda, switch one is defaulted to control relay one. So if you want the PIR to directly control the relay, set it as switch one, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. Mostly because the way the PIR works, it doesn't just go on when it detects a large ball of heat. It goes on and then off, and then it goes back on, and then back off, and then back on and back off and then back on and back off. You catching the pattern here? So if you connected that directly to your relay, it'd be kind of messy. It's better to use the on and off as a trigger for an automation. Once you've selected switch two for one of your GPIO pins, hit save and it'll restart. Now to set the MQTT topic for that switch, when the board starts back up, go to console and then type switch topic two space and then whatever you want to use for the topic for your PIR sensor. For my example, I set my topic to D1 Mini 01 PIR. If you're setting this up for your house, it probably makes sense to make the topic associated with the location where you've got the PIR sensor. It'll make things a lot easier to sort out in your automations. For the PIR, there's a few things we need to set up in Home Assistant. First, you need to go to the configuration.yaml file and set up a new binary sensor. The platform is MQTT and the name is whatever you want. The important part is that the middle section of this topic matches whatever you put after switch topic two in the Tasmoda console. If you haven't got that right, it won't work. Next, we wanna tell Home Assistant what kind of binary sensor this is. So in the customize section, we set the device class as motion. There are like 20 different kinds of binary sensors you can use, and all of them essentially act like a switch. So they'll be set up the same way. Now to get the motion detection to actually do something, we need to set up an automation. In this case, 
you can't use the automation editor. At least when I tried, I ran into some problems. But with this automation in the configuration.yaml file, it worked fine. If that guy would have helped me set up this automation, I'd thank him. But since he didn't, I won't. Well, that's it. If at any point you've made use of Tasmoda, I hope you make it a point to head over to Theo's GitHub page and let him know how much you appreciate what he's done. I can't imagine how much time has gone in to putting together this bit of software. And I, for one, am super thankful for it. So Theo, here's to you. Now the Salt Lake City Maker Fair is coming up fast. In the next few days, we're gonna be working real hard on the display. So I should have some fun stuff to share. And hopefully at least a few of you will be able to come by and say hi when we're there. One last thing, on the last live stream, a couple people asked me if I do this full time. I wish I did, but I don't. If you think what I'm doing is cool and you wanna support me, the best thing you can do is click on the product links that I put in the description or on my website. It doesn't cost you anything extra and you don't even have to buy the product that you click on. Just using my link to get to like Amazon and buy anything else helps me out. That's all for now. Hope that was helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.